Hi, I'm my name is Anna Savina. I'm a content and community manager here at Felt. I'm super excited to kick off this satellite Im imagery webinar where we'll talk about uh, working with raster images in um, in Felt and we'll also go through um, a couple of really exciting use cases for Felt uh, that our speakers will share and also tips and tricks uh, for best ways to uh, work with satellite imagery in Felt. Um, I'm super, super excited, but before we start, I wanted to to go over a couple of uh, housekeeping uh, items. Uh, first of all, we have this map. Uh, it has some useful links and resources. Our recently launched YouTube channel has now so many um, great resources and this is two tutorials that are really relevant to anyone who is new to felt and wants to learn about raster imagery or satellite imagery and also wants to uh, learn about sharing sharing felt maps uh, online so um, please um, check it out it's on our map i'll share a link in a second in the chat and also another important note before we start is that we really want to collect all the questions here on the map because it's a little bit harder for us to navigate Zoom chat with questions. So if you have a question uh, for our team or for our speakers about their use cases and felt, please type, the, type them here. This map is shared with everyone so you uh, can easily edit it. Um, and uh, please um, let's collect it all here. And with that, I am really excited to pass it over to my colleague, uh, Alvaro, who is a data curator at Felt, and he will briefly talk about all the um, ways you can uh, work with raster imagery right now in our product. All right. Thanks so much, Anya. Um, so it's really important that you go to that map. I've just dropped the link in the Zoom chat because we're actually going to use it for a little exercise right now. So I'm going to share my screen. And OK, so yeah, I see some people are appearing already. We've got about 10 people. There's 21 of us here, so just going to give a minute so everybody can go in there. And even if you don't have a Felt account, that's fine. Um, you're still going to be able to do the exercise. OK, we've got plus 10. This is a lot better. A lot of anonymous swordfish, clam, shark, crab, jellyfish, narwhal. OK. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to, and I, I'd like everybody to follow along, we're just going to zoom in here to the Bay of Bengal, where I've just put a straight line and a side that says yes or no. And I'd like to give everyone a minute to just like select, drop a pin in there and maybe customize it a bit. You can click here on the icon and choose any emoji that you feel represents you. I don't know. I, I haven't chosen mine, so maybe it's going to be one of the dinosaur ones or something. Yeah, let's go with the sauropod. Okay, so just drop a pin there. You can add your name if you want. If you're shy, you can also not do that. Oh, sorry, the public access is view. Yeah, let's make a view comment edit. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, okay, there are the cursors. Yeah, loving this. Um, so just select a pin. If you are an anonymous user, if you don't have an account, what you're going to do is you're going to drop a comment instead. So you'll have a button like this one. And you can just click somewhere on the map, and that will drop a comment. But don't do that yet. We'll do it when we have a question. So starting to see some pins. They're all just flat colors, not too fun. OK, Katie, awesome. Cowboy hat. Yes. OK, I'm loving this. OK, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to ask a couple of questions. It's going to be really easy. And I just want you to move your pin to one side or the other if you know, you'd answer yes or no to this question. Um, so let me move Zoom out of the way because there's a ton of stuff on the screen right now. And I'm just going to type the question here as well. Question number one, have you ever taken, whoops, I don't know how to write, taken a screenshot of Google Maps to share it with someone? I'm already on the yes side. I'm going to make the, that even more clear. Okay. And by the way, this is the moment, anonymous users, you can drop your comment here and just put it on one side or the other. So it seems everybody's done this. Not surprised. Everybody's taken a screenshot of Google Maps at least once in their life. OK, let's go with question number two. Question number two is, have you ever edit, create, let's say created or edited a map in PowerPoint? PowerPoint or um, you know, Keynote or whatever. 
my, mm -hmm. in my case, it's also yes. So I'm going to stay on this side. Yeah, some have, some haven't. That's all right. Seems to be a fairly common experience. Okay, question number three. And if nobody gets this, this is fine. But do you get this mean? I've, have, I've got a mean here hidden. Got the opacity set to zero. So let's just set it to 100%. And I'm just going to zoom in. It says, please find the shape file attached and the .shp file flies but all these other files, they stay where they are. Has this ever happened to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay, it seems to be a common experience. Okay, so all of this is just to highlight that working, sharing geospatial information of any kind, even if it's a screenshot, is hard, right? It's a hard thing to do. And it's hard because you have to get the bytes to the other person, but you also have to get the other person maybe have the appropriate software to open it, be able to visualize it, be able to understand what's going on. So there are a lot of challenges. And those challenges are similar to working with regular data, which also used to be very hard and is getting better. I mean, there are downsides. For example, I have a WhatsApp group with myself just to send myself documents because it's easier to find it there than in the, the files on my phone for some reason. But there have been many improvements. For example, I really like Google Docs, right? Because in Google Docs, it solved this problem for me. I used to have like documents called final, 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 underscore three, underscore five, final, final, uppercase, final. Um, and that just suddenly disappeared because I didn't have to send them via email. I could just collaborate with people on a document. And in the end, a map is a document. So we're trying to do something similar with Felt. Um, so I'm just going to leave this here and switch to a different map. As you can see, it's just a blank map. It says so even in the title. And what we're going to do is we're going to start playing with this document that is a map. So most maps start either with, well, most maps start with data, right? Either creating data or uploading data. So in this case, we're going to upload some data. And I know that not all satellite data is imagery. There's other kinds, even vector data that comes out of there. So we're just going to drag in a file that I have here, which is, um, it's oil storage data stored in ports. And this is a sample file from Ursa Labs, which is amazing, by the way. I really love this data. Um, and as you can see, it just processed. It's in felt now. And I can just zoom to fit and start exploring and seeing what's going on. OK, so we have St. Croix in, where is this? In, oh, just off the shore of Puerto Rico. Oh, in an island, actually, in the British Virgin Islands. We've got a bunch of ports. And we can do some stuff, fun stuff already. So I can go ahead and. Click edit, and I'm going to visualize these maybe by the total capacity in that port. So let's just choose a size range, and we're going to size by the um, capacity field. OK, and I now quickly have a map, and I can start understanding and saying, oh, I had no idea. There's this huge storage of oil in the EU, right? Like, where is this? If I zoom in, I can learn, which is always very fun. So this is in Rotterdam, and it's in a port which makes sense. And it's even called 1E Petroleum Haven. So I'm guessing it's related to oil storage, which makes sense. Um, so I can start understanding my data. But of course, we're here mostly centered on imagery. So apart from vector data, you can also work with raster data in Felt. And instead of uploading it, I could do this just the same way, right? Like dragging and dropping in a GeoTIFF. But I'm going to do something different, which is also, I think, very special if you've been in the world of GIS for a while, which is that I'm just going to go to this mysterious folder on my computer into this mysterious map. And I've got, it's just my backup map where I have other data, right? But I'm going to go and click on one of these layers and click on copy. And now take it to my map and paste. And I now have another layer. This is from SkyFi. This is some sample data, very high resolution in Austin, Texas. And I can just double click and immediately fly to it. OK, so I'm now looking at some raster imagery. and. By the way, I love this data. If there's folks from SkyFi here, hats off to you because it's really fun how you download this. It's just, I love that experience. Um, so I can now start maybe getting some insights from my data, right? I could switch to my satellite base map and just maybe check and look for differences between um, what I can see in this image and what was there before. So for instance, I can see that just south of the stadium, there's been this development here that appears as a parking lot in Mapbox satellite and appears somewhat differently here. So we can start maybe, you know, creating data and getting some insights and gonna say, let's just let's just annotate this map a bit and like create these polygons. You can imagine maybe I'm training um 
I'm getting training data for some kind of like deep learning algorithm. Um, okay, what else? Can I spot any more difference? Yes, here in University Park, there are two buildings that don't appear, right? These used to be parks, but from this more recent data, and recent is 2022, never trust satellite on you know Google or Mapbox. It's not very recent. Uh, it's very pretty, but it's not very recent. Um, I can see some new developments. So uh, I'm just going to maybe draw those as well. I'm trying to get Zoom out of the way all the time. Yeah. OK, so I can create my polygons here. And this is even funner if I had invited some folks to this map and we just do it together. We've seen some really big news outlets, for instance, do that, which is very fun. So if I were to do that, maybe this experience is you found this similar to other apps you've used, like Google Docs. I can just add people via email. I can copy a link. I can set who can access, who can view or comment or comment and edit this map. So it's just really seamless. I don't have to deal with final, final files anymore. Um, OK, so we've uploaded some vector data. We uploaded some raster data as a file. But I also want to tackle another very common format of raster and imagery, because imagery is many times very big. It updates very quickly. So sometimes it's not served as files, but as a hosted service, right? So if you've ever seen one of my presentations here, I'm going to pull off a trick that I do always. I'm kind of a one trick pony. I'm just going to pull back the world here. And I've found a URL that's pointing me some, for, to some tiles for a planet that has these Z, X, and Y parameters in curly brackets. And I can just copy that text. And I could go to felt, file, add from URL, and paste it here. But I can just copy paste directly into the map. And felt is going to understand what's going on. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm having trouble with that, which is weird because I just was successful before. But I'm going to add from URL now. And what Felt's going to do is it's going to add the service. And it's also going to figure out some metadata, some stuff from it. For example, like where the bounding box is so that I can zoom directly to it, parsing the tile JSON and so on. This works for XYZ tiles. It works for TMS tiles. It works for WMTS. You can add CQL filters to it. it it's quite complete. OK, so now I'm looking at some tiles from Planet. And once again, I can just compare it to the base map and see a lot of interesting stuff. For instance, you'll see, you'll notice that there is also, oh, that's the SkyFi one. Also some new development going on, right? These used to be fields, and now they are something else. So I can start getting insights um, from all of this. And that's mostly what I had. If I had to like just remark one thing, what I think makes it special is that if you find if you found this simple, that you could do it yourself, it's because, well, it is. It's easy, and it's modern, and it's fast. And what I find very exciting is that I've been a GIS professional for a long time. But there's not that many of us. And sometimes it's hard to get access to that person in your org. And just giving someone in your sales team access to something like Felt and saying, hey, drop a few files here, share it to somebody else, comment on my map. Let's start learning, I think is very, very, very exciting. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Alvaro. Um, this is real impressive. Um, I just wanted to, uh, before we go into our Next section, I wanted to uh, give a quick reminder. I posted in the chat this map. If you have any questions for Alvaro, or as we go, we you might have some questions for our speakers, please uh, pa put your questions in this map because we are collecting all the questions here so we can easily navigate to them and answer all the, all the questions at the end of the session. But next up, I'm really excited to introduce you to Katie Betts, um, Head of Business Development at Albedo, who will also go through her use case for Felt and how she uses satellite imagery um, in Felt. Katie, please take it away. Awesome. Can you guys see my screen OK? Yes. Cool. Great. Um, thanks for having me. Um, like Anna said, my name is Katie Betts. I'm head of business development at Albedo. Um, we are building a constellation of low Earth orbiting, well, really very low Earth orbiting imaging satellites that will co-collect 10 centimeter optical with two meter thermal long wave infrared um, imagery. We are uh, currently building our satellites right now. Um, this is our headquarters actually it's right outside of broomfield um or it's in broomfield right outside of denver colorado and um i will share this link uh to, to this map with you guys afterwards um if you're curious to peek around at what we're doing and and learn more but 
I have um, been extremely thankful for felt um, the last year. I do, did not come from a GIS or mapping background whatsoever. And uh, as being head of business development and talking to end users and customers all over the world, working on the coolest problems and um, just having, they just have so much creativity and curiosity and are so stoked for our imagery because we will not be in orbit for uh, until probably mid uh, 2025. So we, uh, they, it's just lots of awesome conversations at, for the time being. And um, it felt or felt has really enabled me to connect with end users, help them understand how our uh, system will operate, how they can um, task, how they can um, order from our archive, how we are just going about um, bringing this imagery to market and democratizing it as much as possible since this resolution has not been available commercially um, and won't until we are in orbit. Um, we just want to shepherd the opportunity well, and uh, if anyone has questions or wants to reach out to me, I'd love to talk and learn about what you're working on. Um, so a few things that I have, have, were really painful for me at first, um, was describing to customers, our, our system is really well suited for small point collect tasking. So instead of, um, ordering very large, or, uh, scene sizes or images, um, that are lower resolution, we are um, well suited to collect uh, an image as small as a circle that has a diameter of one kilometer. Um, there won't be a minimum um, order size with us. And the largest scene size will be about uh, 202 to 250 uh, square kilometers, depending on we can sort of back scan, but I won't get into all that. So, um, just explaining the kind of rewiring the, everyone's brain as to how to leverage um, our system for their use cases and help them uh, get creative and think about new use cases they can work on and what this could unlock for them, um, if not just support or accelerate what they're already doing. And because I was very unfamiliar with um, GIS and mapping, I, I I knew in order to to connect with end users better and actually um, just support them and, 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 and lean in. I, I needed to speak their language a bit more and the other tools out there today are wonderful, but I didn't have time to, you know, it's a full-time job learning this, uh, other tools and truly. Um, and so that it just was perfect timing and I, I couldn't be more thankful. And I've always been a visual learner and it just very, yeah. So all, all dots uh, or all nails were hit on the head. Um, so I'll just walk you guys through a couple of um, kind of my standard workflows, um, either on calls with customers when we hop into felt and we're talking about a use case, um, or maybe they send me um, one of their spatial data sets and I do an analysis of potential um, collection feasibility metrics for them early on versus later on once we have more satellites in orbit um, and then a few other surprise not surprises but uh, some other things too so we can hop over to california now um i'm sure all you know everyone is pretty familiar with the um unfortunate just wildfire uh risk and um, efforts that are always going on, um, or they have been the last few years. Um, it's been really wonderful to work with some um, resources who have been in the utility and vegetation management space for a very long time and learn from them. Um, but it, it was done and felt. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Um, so this is just, you know, some, some data sets that I've pulled from uh, Cal Open Data and um, like Cal Fire, but it's it's good if customers send me um, the specific uh, transmission or electrical or sorry transmission or distribution lines that they are concerned about, or um, the specific transformers that they're concerned about, or um, substations that they're concerned about, and then we can look at okay where are they located, and then where 
based on where they're located, are we able to image um, based on the, the spacing that we need in between each um, image that we take? Um, we can take lots, the smaller the image, the more we can take um, near one another. Um, and so that's another thing we've we've had to explain and kind of talk through with customers and, and felt has has helped a bunch. So I will just open up some of these data sets real quick, but um, it usually starts with just looking at where are the high hazard, um, high risk tier one, tier, or sorry, tier two, tier three um, fire zones and um, understanding, okay, are any of their important infrastructure assets in that zone? Maybe that is an area they need to be more aware of and um, be more proactive and in, in, in figure out the types of, um, whether that's using more imagery or sending crews out more often just to get ahead of it. Um, so this is definitely a conversation that is uh, ongoing and probably won't stop for a while. Um, and I'm sure many of you have had similar conversations um, or are working on this. So would love to talk to you about it if you are. Um, and I will move on to the next. We will go over to, oh, here's here's something too. So these are kind of, a few of our standard image sizes. And so it's so fun to be able to just pull these around, like I'll open this back up, to just quickly move them around, change, you know, make them different colors, uh, quickly save a bunch of them once they're like, you know, where we figured out where the imaging needs to happen, um, save them as a GeoJSON and run it through our collection model and like that that it's just a takes two seconds so that's been that's been great and i can add customers to um the the felt uh map and it, it's a shared secure space and i think they feel um it's an easy thing for them to pop in for five minutes and add feedback or give me more information or me give them feedback or more information um so that's been great. And I've, they will have drawn their own polygons and, and done some really creative stuff. Um, I wish I, I could share with you guys. Um, okay, yeah, I, I forgot, here we go. This is, this is an example of the spacing that is needed, oops, sorry, in between collects for us. And it, it's just good to visualize it. And this is one based off of substations that are high voltage. And this is a collection based off of um, transmission lines that are very high voltage and that are in high risk uh, fire zones. And there's a bunch of stuff that's popped up. So you can't really see the fire risk um, data anymore. But I added um, where I got these layers um, here, if anybody needs them or is interested in looking into them. Okay, okay, we're gonna, okay. So I went to UT, I live in Austin, Texas, and the SkyFi image that um, you just showed, I uh, I was like, oh my goodness, is this one that I have ordered before? Oh, I ordered this one in, I think it was March. Um, it's awesome. I mean, did it from my phone, got it within a week and just amazing. Um, so sometimes customers do send imagery and I uploaded this really easily through, uh, just dropping it in the GeoTIFF, um, file. And I mean, within 10 seconds was load there and ready to go. Um, it is a heavy file. So that was really impressive for me and yeah, um, and then as we go over to Austin, this is also another uh, SkyFi image. This was a cloudy day, but um, there's, I think, a lot that you can do if you were to uh, bring up a layer, you know, with, and it just whether you're, you're looking at uh, transportation or infrastructure or where hospitals are, whatever, like bring up layers that are already loaded with felt or your own data on top of imagery um, to just make analysis way better. Um, now we will, I think the last one we'll go to 
is okay so this is actually one of our sample images that was collected um via aerial collection and then um down sample to basically just have all the effects that we will experience in space so it's quite representative it's the deer sig model was run on top of this imagery um if anyone's familiar with that but um the we used in um, an xyz url and this is a heavy 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 image and so we know that in order for customers to be able to get any value from our imagery they have to we have to they have to be able to manipulate it and move it around and um just so thankful that these options are out there now and we are already you know playing around with it ourselves um there is a blog post about our sample imagery there and then we can go over here sorry i should be using a different mouse right now um so the, yeah this is a situation where this is our largest image size that we will have period and oh this is the wrong that's meant to be in kilometers, not square miles. Um, but if this customer wanted a, an image of all three stadiums here, MetLife, Yankee Stadium, and City Field, they prob like they could maybe do it. Like I, I clipped uh, as closely as I could around the parking lots of each. But this is maybe one where the first pass one day, they just will snag, will image one of them. And then the next time we orbit and we are um going over that area we will collect the other two so it's it's just nice to be able to get in here and do that really easily um yeah I sort of all of I mean I do have there's one more I mean Anna do I have time yes totally okay cool there was one more thing I was gonna say maybe about oh oh oh, oh. um the I am just so thankful for the clipping situation like it is we look at i mean property insure insurance or property insurers are are really you know excited about the, i mean building footprints i feel like microsoft did it in in june i think they announced like the whole world now is and is is that i, I wanted to ask you guys is that what runs on the back end with your uh clipping technology or you're maybe not allowed to say but yeah, we can say we can talk about it later if you want the q a okay. okay i mean it's phenomenal and it's it's so fast along with some of the other you know proprietary propri uh, proprietary stuff that you guys do to make it just run so fast but um i just thinking about gosh you know with uh, more data more t modalities and and different just I mean, sensors, terrestrial and from space, the the insights that we're going to be getting from tools like felt just out of the box um, is going to be wild. And it's not going to take just crazy, crazy one off like uh, deep neural networks to try to figure out one specific new insight. And that's, I think, exciting for a lot of the environmental problems that we all need to be can, working on and, and um, you know doing our best towards um okay so now we will go over to a mine site and I'm trying to remember where this went I did this very very early this morning okay so this is a um SAR image. Uh this is an Umbra image. They have an awesome um open data program. Highly recommend if anyone is interested in uh playing around with SAR or learning more about SAR. They have an awesome team and it's just great for I mean that is it, it makes imagery 2D and it's makes 3D reconstruction so much easier and 
um yeah it's wild but um this is one of the oldest mine sites in the, the or not it's one of the oldest and one of the biggest and it produces i think the most like gold and ore and copper um in the world and it is sort of in a remote area um and it, it the mine tailings or the tailings have been pretty severe and have um gotten into this ocean I'm, i can't remember what it's called and i'm gonna mess up pronouncing it um but our roof for us see um so i can imagine that just being such a remote area being having the ability to uh use remote sensing and gis tools like felt to um monitor you know what how are the how's the mine site doing uh where are the minerals going? Are the pipelines that are uh, moving these minerals, um, uh, are they not broken? Are they working correctly? Are they not adding to the tailings problem? Um, things like that. And the, I just added here, like some, this was, a, I mean, I talk with a lot of mining customers and they, uh, <clears throat> ports are important to them. And shipping routes are very important to them. And so uh, being able to be, just be one extra data source to help them understand where their inventory is, how their um, their employees are doing, uh, keep everyone safe and healthy is really important. Um, but yeah, I encourage all to check out Umbra. And just, oh, they, so they had um, their, I guess, hosts, they're hosting the their imagery with uh, AWS. And so you literally just a URL, you copy and paste it from their website, pop it into felt. Not, you don't even have to do this. Like you literally just copy and paste on the page and it, boom, it's there and it looks beautiful. And I meant to do this so that the image would be way more powerful, but I forgot. I think I literally wrote it down for myself. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. So for this, if someone wanted to image that mind site, they could just snag a circle from us and there you go. Um, and uh, yeah, just, just one more, one more example. So anyways, that's all I got. Um, I could talk all day. So Thank you so much, here. Katie. This is so impressive. Um, and uh, just combining um, raster imagery with data layers is just looks very powerful. Uh, thank you so much. Well, uh, next up we have Owen um, Owen Smith, who um, is a, a researcher and uh, also has a story to share about using satellite imagery and felt. Owen, please take a, take it away. Yeah, of course. Um, let me share my screen. Um, do you see that part? Yes, we see your screen. Awesome. Perfect. Um, and I'm also sharing it in the chat as well. So feel free to join, do whatever, uh, leave comments, hopefully not mean comments. But yeah, so um, I am a uh, PhD student uh, here at the Center for Geospatial Analytics at North Carolina State. Um, and so I'm part of the Spatial uh, Ecosystems Analytics Lab. Uh, we call ourselves SEAL. Uh, and we are housed here in Jordan Hall um, and, and CSU. Um, so in the SEAL lab, uh, my lab mates and I, uh, we work on a variety of problems uh, ranging from um, deforestation detection, uh, meth methane emissions with um, uh, flooding and wetlands, uh, data augmentation to aid in uh, smallholder farm delineation uh, across India and Nepal, um, phenology reconstruction, and so on and so forth. Um, most of our work um, is computationally based, um, so um, we'll, most of our time is spent writing the code to, to run um, performant algorithms with a lot of data um, at scale on, on the NCSU's HPC system. Um, and so with that, um, what felt kind of comes in with that uh, is it allows us to um, kind of better spot check and to better visualize and share results with stakeholders um, without having to boot up uh, an entire 
uh, GIS uh, take up um, resources because we don't really need uh, the kind of the tools um, associated with your standard um, GIS. Um, not that those aren't very useful, um, but we, we, we write our own code. Uh, we, we do our own processing. Um, and so with that, um, take you to an example. Um, so here uh, is kind of the um, results for an algorithm. Uh, it's a Bayesian algorithm called RoboBase. It's on CRAN. Uh, you, you can um, in install it from there for R. Um, and it's written uh, in R and C++. Uh, and with that, um, we're running it at 30 meters to find heavy construction change um, at scale. So this is just an example here where um, I was utilizing felt and the ability to drop in media, um, say, as uh, we saw earlier, uh, this is just snapshots for, from Google Earth, um, but it, it gives us a, a good historical record uh, of the site. And so we can kind of see how that progresses um, over time. Uh, and so the the new, um, the ability to drop in our own raster data, though, is, is, is crucial, um, just because we are working with, with rasters, obviously, L less vector, more rasters, um, and and the, the ability to drop in over time is important because all, all of our stuff is time series based. So we can see here, um, there's some minor changes here, just spot checking our data. Um, but um, we can see it more so here. So the, this top layer is in 2014, this is in 2016. Um, so yeah, um, with that, then um, it's kind of um, crucial for, for me to be able to do that. Uh, and it's, it's a lot quicker to, to, to debug. Um, it's really minor, but the ability to get um, coordinates really quickly uh, that I can then plug into um, uh, whatever programming language I'm using to extract time series uh, is, is, is it helps, it, it speeds up a lot. Uh, instead of having to go create a GeoJSON JSON polygon somewhere, make sure it's projected correctly, all that fun stuff, load it in, um, GDAL, OGR, all that, all of that. Um, so yeah. Um, and additionally, um, it's it's really aided in allowing um, to kind of explain to stakeholders um, what's happening where. Uh, and why things are happening instead of sending just kind of a static, um, whether that's a PowerPoint or just a QGIS map, um, we can look at stuff in real time, we can annotate, we can discuss it over a call. Um, and that is, that's been really crucial for, for me and, and aided a lot in the workflow. Um, another um, example was, um, just a quick project for a um, spatial stats class. Um, I, was, I was working on um, a quad tree based algorithm for um, for uh, uh, my own research. And, and I wanted to see how well um, I could treat these as kind of like an adaptive sampling scheme and, um, and pull uh, and correctly reconstruct um, the data from it. Um, and so we can see here, so this is a uh, planet fusion imagery, a, um, uh, a subset of it. So it's three meter imagery, uh, four bands, and this is the NDVI um, of a um, field uh, on the outskirts of Dubai. Um, so kind of an interesting area to try this, uh, seeing as we have um, consistent high vegetation followed by um, kind of an, an arid environment. And you can see here what that looks like um, with the resulting quad tree. Um, and so felt what was, was really nice when I was going through this project, uh, just kind of visualizing data uh, and, and making sure my assumptions lined up um, and then being able to drop in uh, stuff such as um, the, the variance for different models uh, and just being able to, to closer inspect it um, comparatively. Uh, and yeah, and then final results, obviously, with, with the model and, and yeah, it was just for a class. So. Nothing too crazy, but um, really, really aided in that as well. Um, and that is about all I have, which is less than Katie, but hopefully just as useful. Super useful. Thank you so much, Owens. This is really impressive. Um, 
Well, uh, now we have uh, about 15 minutes to go over our Q&A. Uh, thank you so much uh, for dropping your questions here. Uh, if you have uh, more questions, please follow the link in the chat and you can um, you can add the question so we can add this to our list. Um, it's just the best way for us to consolidate them and not look for them uh, in our Zoom chat. Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited to start this Q&A session. Um, and I think the first question will go to Alvaro. Um, we have a question from someone asking how do, actually I can see it. Um, uh, we have a question, uh, how do image uploads uh, count towards the free tiers file file upload? Sorry. Oh, yeah, so so right now, um, all uploads count in the same way, whether it's a static vector file, it's a raster file, it's a raster URL, they just all count toward the file file. Um, there's also a storage limit, but that uh, obviously the sum of all of those count towards that storage limit. I think there's some more questions about storage later on. Yeah, uh, can we track the size of our uploads to better understand the storage space required on felt site and understand how the, to best optimize these files? Um, what kind of optimizations does felt already do for this? Um, yeah, I think it's it's just an extension of the first question. Um, Albert, yeah. can you um, explain a little bit um, more about the way we are measuring this? Sure. Um, so right now, um, users can't see the size of the uploads, but they will be able to in order to be able to track your storage. Um, as you probably already all know here, uh, we're starting uh, our pricing plans in January 2024, although there will still be a free tier, as the first question alludes to. Um, so when that happens, you'll be able to see how much storage you've used. Um, and what kind of optimizations does Felt do? Well, maybe not not specifically for storage, um, but just for speedier visualization. Um, Felt builds pyramids, raster pyramids, if you're familiar with that concept of like um, averaging the values of pixels so that you have like smaller images that you can see from further away, the same way as like vector tiles work for a vector. Awesome. And uh, is there an upper limit for a number of tile URLs? Um, not in the not in the paid plans. In the free tier, it's the five five file upload. Awesome. Um, and we also have a question: Is there a way to integrate static um, catalogs with Felt? Okay, that's a really good question because um, there isn't a built-in way specifically for stack catalog stack catalogs for. If anybody isn't familiar, I like I, I hope I get this right. Spatial temporal spatial temporal asset catalogs. Um, so if you've seen that you can add from a URL, as Katie mentioned, if you've got an S3 URL, you can paste that directly and felt will download the file and process it with you without you having to download it. But we also have a felt API which allows you to upload layers to an existing map or create a new map with those layers. So you can actually also build any kind of middleware yourself. Um, there's plenty of folks who've already built some Python packages or R packages to like integrate with the API, API in that way. Yeah, awesome. Um, and um, last question. Oh, sorry. Actually, uh, we don't have, this is a question I can answer. What is the best way to learn about all of Felt? Um, First of all, I can't recommend enough our YouTube channel. You have you can see some links here on the map. Um, it's um, especially I added some videos about raster and sharing maps, but we have a, a whole library of short videos and uh, one big tutorial, and we'll also com uh, continue updating our YouTube channel. So now we're building this uh, almost like an academy. Uh, for anyone who can learn um, about web mapping. So I'm really, really excited about that. So subscribe to our channel to learn about our new features and learn about some of the hidden um, functionalities of Felt. Um, and then I think another way to really keep up with all the updates is subscribing to our Reddit page. Um, it's a, a community where people ask um, questions about Felt, share their maps and tips and tricks. So it's another way to also keep up with all the exciting works that uh, Felt community members are putting together. Um, and um, our last question here, um, 
on the map is how would you recommend visualizing a time series of raster imagery over the same AOI? Um, Alvaro, do you want to take this one? Sure. Um, so we've seen some users do this by just adding all the layers and then you know cycling through them. Um, it's really useful in that case. You can toggle visibility individual individually for layers, but you also have options in the menu to toggle for all layers or to hide for all layers. So what I do is hide them all, order by time, hide them all, and then toggle them uh, one by one. Actually, I don't know, maybe Katie, you've already done something similar. I don't know if you faced this problem before. You're muted, sorry. Sorry, um, I haven't actually, no, I have not run into that problem necessarily yet. While I've got you here, Katie, you were asking before about the sources for um, the buildings. So we oh, use. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Sorry, can you repeat the question? I think I'm confused. The 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 question for the time series is different, but I'm alluding to that the fact that you asked us about uh, the sources for the buildings and the Microsoft buildings uh, yes. during your presentation. Yeah. 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 So, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're going to answer that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Got exactly. it. I was like, wait, how do these things keep, like work together? These two questions. Um, yes, I, I would love to know because I am have been curious for a while and yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you're familiar with a project from Meta called Daylight Map Distribution. It's an amazing project. It's mostly built on OpenStreetMap data, but they also integrate other sources like Microsoft Buildings. Um, just a bunch of sources that are really useful and they combine those into like a single data set. So you have the best of many worlds. So that's Got what it. you're seeing here. Yeah. Okay. Can you send that in the, in the chat so I can uh, snag it and, and draw it down or else? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Very sure thing. Cool. It's also what we use for the buildings layer, by the way, if you have okay. that. Built. <laughs> Got it. Nice. Well, thank you everyone for asking and answering these questions, but I also wanted to, before we close out, to open the floor for maybe some spontaneous questions from the, uh, that you can ask just on Zoom. Um, let's, let's pause for a second here and see if anyone has any, any closing remarks or questions. I've got one for Alvaro. Hey, this is Thomas. Uh, I work for a different SAR imagery data provider, whatever, and we have a hackathon right now. And we also have an open data program. We have a couple hundred scenes in there. And I would like to visualize that in felt. That's I ask all the questions, are there like limits for the tile URLs and stuff like that? So if I understood you correctly, I can only have five tile URLs uh, on the map at this point. Um, so that starts in January uh, 2024. Right now, you can add as much as you want. I'd recommend Sweet. go nuts. Just try everything. Um, yeah. Okay, it. thanks. And uh, just to clarify, uh, starting in January, we will have paid plans. So you'll obviously be able to have more uh, more URLs. It's just going to be on a paid plan. But you will, it, is there is no upper, if I understand correctly, is there is no upper limit? It's just uh, the free plan will remain with like three, oh, with five tile uh, URLs. Awesome. Thank you. Also, Thomas, um, in case you're interested, I'm just going to share in the chat a mini app I made for something similar. I was trying to like add lots and lots of data from different open data, um, open data city portals using an API system called CCAM. Um, so if you want to check that out, I'm just posting it there because I think you can access the GitHub repo from there. And yeah, you could build something similar for yourself, basically. And just like, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to hook it in with the API or something, do something automated whenever we add something new to edit there. But yeah, that's great. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Thomas. Um, okay. Um, I'll pause one more time to make sure that we answered all the questions. Um, Thomas, are you, what uh, data provider are you with? It'd be awesome like to know about another open data provider. Oh, we're with Capella Space. Awesome. Yay. Cool. I, th so, I, I think the office is like probably five kilometers from your office or something, at least the Colorado <laughs> office. Yes. Will you? Yes. Yep. I did see you on, is it um, the o OGC or Capella, not OGC, um, the, oh, uh, what is it? Open Data Registry from AWS. Yes. That's where our program is yes. posted. So I, yep. the difference to Umbra is like, we don't have to pay for the storage ourselves. Right. <laughs> so right. like you let somebody else host it. Right. 
Very good. Cool. Awesome. Well, um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, thank you so much to Alvaro, to Katie and Owen for the amazing presentations. And um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, to our Reddit community. And also please stay tuned because we're going to launch something super, super exciting. Um, it's going to be new features uh, for uh, raster imagery at the end of September. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll, we'll expand this functionality and we're really excited to see uh, what kind of uh, new opportunities it will unlock for our users. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.